the gospel reflection of the day brought to you by Sister Rosalind Mombani from the Congregation of the Daughters of St. Paul. As the day begins, listen, reflect and live the word of God, the best food ever for the soul. It is Tuesday of the 21st week in Ordinary Time, the 29th day in the month of August 2023. We begin our reflection in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our theme for reflection today is Dare to Stand for the Truth. We read from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 6, verse 17 to 29. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. The Gospel of the Lord Dear friend, in this passage from St. Mark, we see the power of an oath. John the Baptist was beheaded because he spoke truth to power. The man who prepared the way for Jesus was executed at the whim of a corrupt ruler. Those who work for justice in the world or witness to their faith today often face difficult and even life-threatening situations. John the Baptist was the innocent victim of the irresponsible use of power. The Gospel reading suggests that Herod had John executed because he wanted to save face. Having made a reckless promise to his stepdaughter, he would not go back on it, as to do so would have meant a loss of honor before his friends. There have always been and still are innocent victims of the irresponsible use of power among us all. Jesus was the supreme example of a victim of the irresponsible use of power. It was the religiously and politically powerful who had Jesus crucified. So whenever anyone is victimized in this way, it is always a terrible tragedy. Such a contradiction to the rule of justice, and it is never God's will. John the Baptist is described in the Gospel as a good and holy man. He courageously spoke God's truth, God's way, and that is why he was beheaded. Jesus was crucified for the same reason, because he proclaimed God's ways, God's purposes, by what he said and lived by. We are all called to proclaim the ways of God, loving friend, as revealed to us by Jesus Christ. That will call for courage at times, the courage displayed by John the Baptist and Jesus himself. One of the traditional seven gifts of the Holy Spirit is courage. We must pray for the gift of courage in our dealings with one another as pertains our faith and standing for the truth. Today, more than in the past, we need a courageous faith. We need the courage of the Holy Spirit to witness to the values of the gospel as John and Jesus did. A courageous faith is not an arrogant faith, but it is a firm faith, an enduring faith, a faith that holds firm when the storms come because its roots are very deep. We pray this morning for the gift of such a faith the kind of faithfulness that shaped John's life and death. You see, Herod is a lot like us. He knows what is right, but he can't do it. Many a times we are confronted with such realities. 
after accusing somebody falsely. As leaders, we don't have the courage to lower ourselves and apologize or make things better than they are. We stand by what we believe that a leader can never be wrong, which is not true. Let us pray for the courage to stand for the truth of Christ in all situations and be courageous enough to still say, I made a mistake, I want to retrieve that statement. Remember it is for the glory of God and our own sanctification when we can live the truth of Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wish you a beautiful day. May the Lord bless us all. You've been listening to the Gospel Reflection for today as brought to you by Sister Rosalie Mwambani from the Congregation of the Daughters of St. Paul. Remember to listen, reflect and live the Word of God, the best food ever for the soul.